Patrick, it seems to me that if the construct was fully controlled by those against us, the numerical patterns would be randomized so as not to allow us to uncover them. Okay, another very interesting point, and let me tell you why. I, I agree with you, and let me tell you what I found. These Phoenix resets are cleverly disguised. Yes, they happen every 138 years, but they never happen in the same place twice, or at least back to back. There might be a four or five... Uh, it might skip a uh, hemisphere four or five times. It'll come back to it or, or, or a continent or a geographical area. Now, most of the Phoenix destructions are highly localized. They don't even occur over an entire hemisphere. It's just a certain area. Or maybe every single one of them are hemispheric. We just don't have the records for them. It's amazing we have the records we do. And, and newer, newer references are being found all the time. For those of you who, who have followed the uh, Colburn Bible and the Oralind text, and the Ragnaro references. Hell, a year ago, I didn't know about all three of those, but now we have them. So, uh, but it's a very good, it's a very good observation you make now because what I've recorded in the 138 year intervals for the Phoenix and the 792 year ones for, for Nibiru, they're not all. The world has suffered many cataclysms in between and they're very anomalous. I'll give you an example. What happened in 1899 BC isn't mathematically connected to anything in history. I have tried forward and backward in time. I've been trying, I've tried to force fit 1899, and yet that is the exact date for the Tower of Babel cataclysm. I'm all, I, sometimes I wonder if it even, if the event even happened. Uh, the, the changing of the languages, all this stuff, that can only happen in a simulation, in a computer program. It would be only, only at the touch of a few keys. It's a, uh, it would take, all you have to do is change just a little bit of data to, to effect a great, huge change in the output. But the creation from one universal communication system to 60 or 70 different ones to cause conflict would uh, definitely have to be within, from, you know, overseers looking over a simulated context. Or the entire history is ex post facto. It was written in the event never happened at all. And maybe that's why I can find absolutely nothing. Nothing that, that parallels eight. Nothing is mathematically connected to the year 1899 BC. It's, it's, it's unusual. Now, we do have a very unusual event in 1859. In 1859, uh, in 1859 BC, uh, according to the Sumerian records, and Sitchin had a lot of material. Uh, it looks like nuclear war. The Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, the Ramayana, they, man, they're very, the Puranic texts, they're very specific about these star-sun missiles and how they, uh, they ignite and they blow up with the, with a white light of 10,000 suns and people's eyes are melted out. Uh, their flesh is burned off their bodies before the skeletons even hit the ground. And they're very descriptive of nuclear atomic warfare. In, 18, nine, in 1859 B.C., we see it over and over. We see the records, we see all these texts, and they're describing this great, evil, fiery wind, nuclear fallout, that started at so Sodom and Gomorrah, and it moved, and it rolled across, and, and killed that whole forest area and created the Arabian Desert, and kept moving, and it took out Sumer, it took out Akkad. It left Babylon and left Babylonia and Assyria, which are further to the north. And Babylonia and Assyria's records are the ones that preserved this for us. Babylon then became a major empire and continued, even though it was taken over by the Amuru, the Westerners called the Amorites. And this is where Hammurabi comes into play. He was a foreign ruler, an Amorite over a Babylonian dynasty. But this was 10 years after this event. So, 18, uh, 18 uh, excuse me, it's 18, not 1859, 1849 B.C., we had this massive destruction. All these cities are burned off. Stuff. And in the Annus Mundi calendar, the ancient world's calendar, can you guess what year 1849 B.C. is? It's the year 2046. Again, here's another cross calendrical parallel. That's a new term. I have not I have not divulged this yet. This is the very first time I've ever mentioned cross calendrical parallels. But in my books I mention them all the time. In my videos I've been waiting because I don't want to get into that yet because most people will just think I'm rambling about 
Our entire history is palindromic, and cross calendrical parallels are found everywhere. Even though some dude named Sosigenes created the Anno Domini calendar, it wasn't even used for three or four centuries until after that.